Hi guys, and welcome back to another episode of Rebuilding Wimbledon. If we could get 400, maybe even 500 likes on the video, if you're still enjoying the series, that would be magnificent. Now, we're going to do the QPR game today, but first we've got some highlights of the games we've played this month. It's been a little bit of a difficult month because we've just had some tough-ass games, but still, I think this squad is really starting to come together, and I think I've pinpointed one of the reasons why we've been playing so well lately. So anyway, I'll join you guys after the highlights, so uh, let's have some fun. A lovely ball to the channel. Ramslar ball back across. Marley's head. Oh, what a perfect goal. That was Barcelona S. That ball inside the fullback. Ball back across. Goal. 1 0 Wimbledon. Can he pull it across? Finds Honda. Good strike. Ramslar on the rebound. Kirk on the second rebound. 2 0 to Wimbledon. Adam Kirk with the goal. It's nice to see him getting a few because Fabio is probably going to take his spot soon. Wimbledon 2, Newcastle 0. And another clean sheet. Brilliant. Alexis Sanchez out wide for Bellerin. Bellerin's got one hell of a ball. Alcacer with the header this time. Bellerin was the top assister in the Premier League last year, and it's Arsenal 1, Wimbledon 0. We just haven't been able to stop them. Alcacer, don't let him turn and shoot. Fossum is going to get it back and shoot and score. That's a goal. Ah, damn it. You can almost feel it. I mean, we've been shocking today. We really, really have. But Arsenal are just that good, unfortunately. And again, ball across a low arm. This time it is in Bellerin. Hit those crosses. It's 3-0 to Arsenal, and deservedly so. We, we just could not handle them. And the being down to 10 men because the injury does not help. But there we go, guys. 3-0 to Arsenal. And that's not bad considering we had an injury and a red card towards the end of that game. You can see the Ramsdale just cutting inside. Oh, my God. Do the Bart man, people. 1-0 to Wimbledon. Bart Ramsalar. This guy is just on a different level. Whips it all the way across. Dybala's in there now. Damn it. It's 1-1 here. Man United scored with their first shot. But we've done well to keep them out till this point. And a great strike from Ramsalar keeps us in this match. And just like last season, we've scored a one the goal and got a draw at Man against Man United. Brilliant. Over the top for Marley. He's inside this time. Can he get the shot away? Terrible angle. Oh, he scored anyway. Radek Marley. Villa nil. Wimbledon won. Radek Marley. And that would actually push us 18 points above the drop zone now. Back for Cleverly. Nice football. Cleverly. Marley can turn. Marley can make it 2-0. 18 minutes in and we're 2-0 up at Villa Park. Radek Marley with both goals. He is really holding down the fort for us before Pabio arrives. What a say. Oh, what? Oh, I mean, very nearly kept that out there. But it is 2-1 here at Villa Park. This could be an interesting rest of match. Really? From that angle? That's really... I mean, then again, Mali scored from a really shitty angle in the first half, but to concede a 2-0 lead here is a real joke. Well, there we go. 2-2. Two, two. I'm really disappointed that we threw that away. That is why I don't go back to counter and stuff when we're doing that. Right, guys, we're back. And before I show you... Oh, you can see the table. You can see what's been going on. We have got 25 points on the board, and things are really looking up. I think a top half finish is actually a really conceivable notion this year. I still think that... There are going to be these sort of teams, this this six teams right here, uh, and Newcastle should be doing better really considering what they're spending, are going to be the sort of plateau to step up to. But I think there's no reason why we couldn't get maybe eighth uh, this year, though Stoke looking pretty good too. So I think an eighth place finish where we are right now would actually be a reasonably good performance this year uh, based on what we've got on the teams around us basically. So question of the day, um, it says, do you follow NBA? Um, now... I'm going to open this up to do you follow American sports because I don't I, I'm not a big fan of basketball I've never been able to get into it I've, I've tried I tried but I just couldn't do it um, if you guys are a fan of NBA in fact let me know what American support sports teams that you like and what sports and stuff like that just drop it in the comments um, like I prefer I much prefer ice hockey like if, if there was any American sport that I'm going to watch it's ice hockey I do actually watch that on quite a regular basis because um, you know you know it's just a good I've watched this since I was a kid I got really into it when I was about 13 years old and then it kind of just went from there but yeah so american football i watched the super bars about it i did watch a bit of baseball over the summer but other than that it's mostly just hockey i'm more of a hockey kind of person um so yeah let me know what you think in the comments and if you've got any ideas for a question today drop those in the comments too with the hashtag qotd right looking at the average ratings in this league hector bellerin is the best in the league for that and he's got the best assists again uh, sorry second best assist this time he was the top assister in the league last year and interestingly um he's been nominated for the ballon d'or he's 24 years old he's hector bellerin and he's nominated for the ballon d'or that's with messi pogba de bruyne people like that so well done him and i hope that will please some arsenal fans that are watching this that's really really cool to see something like that i love little sort of slightly odder uh call ups but then again you can't say he doesn't deserve it because i really think he does so wimbledon you know seven wins out of our 16 matches is good i feel like against villa we should have won uh we really did throw that away we got two nil up and then i thought to myself let's try and counter and see if this sort of taking the foot off and try to defend well it didn't work they just came onto us and we kind of came back into it and very nearly won it at the end uh, after they come back into it but it was too late by that point that's why i tend not to do that so uh, let's take a quick gander at the squad as well while we're here top goal scorer is radek marley now with nine goals in 10 starts that is actually a phenomenally good record for us. I really that kind of has gone under the radar because he hasn't always started, um, but I'm starting to yeah just enjoy him now. Ramsdale scored an absolute 
belter of a goal um, again against Man United. Duarte's got himself another one as well. Or has he? No, that was one against Borough, wasn't it? Uh, Kirk's got four now, but you'd expect more from him. You really would. Um, though his average rating is still not bad. Oh, wait, no. No, it's actually not that bad. I I'm surprised. Um, but assists. Ramsler has eight. He got two in the game against Borough and he got two in the game against Newcastle. When he plays out on that right-hand side, he's got this level of creativity that is second to none and it is so important. I think that Tobias Agger is going to have a job on his hands getting back in the team when he comes back because Ramsalite is a monster on that wing. Seven Man of the Match awards as well. Um, it, just crazy stuff. But there we go. So Fabio hasn't joined us yet, as you can imagine. Um, but when he does, and we've still got a few more games to go before he does, it's going to be amazing. Radek Marley and Fabio, oh, I can't wait to have him home. I think I'm in love. Um, hopefully his hair will continue to change. We're we getting quite a few suspensions now. It's one of those times of the season, but thankfully we're okay here. Gomez can slot in. We've got enough players to cover the angles. Now we're at home against QPR. They're playing a 4-4-2, so so are we. Uh, Marley and Kirk. Marley may as well play as the advance forward. He's got the goals in his game, so we may as well let him. Uh, cleverly, Honda, Duarte and Ramsalar. You can see what I mean. How we need to get some of these players back from injuries. Um, then again, we're not really lacking that many of them now, but Masek, I feel like Honda is just... Hmm, do I use Honda or do I use Masek? Masek really should be on the bench for this one, I, I'd feel. Although, uh, I am going to put Jake Reeves on the bench instead of uh, Fiore. Because just in case we need to switch to that other system, I want to make sure Jake Reeves is available. So, set pieces, interestingly, is what we were training for this one. Because QPR apparently are weak from set pieces. They are definitely not the favourite for this game. That makes me a happy bunny. So, Delort... Dorgan has that. They've got. Oh, look at that. Jack Colbert, Parasit, Par Parasic. I almost said parachute there. Uh, Yunsuk Young, Lascelles, Seamus, Co Seamus Coleman is at QPR. That's a really odd signing. Uh, oh, of course. No, because Everton went down, didn't they? Um, yeah, I did have a look at Everton. I, I actually, at one point, I don't know if I mentioned this in a previous episode, did actually go and go after Deo Lefeu because I didn't think we'd be able to get him, but we ex they had a bid accepted from us of 1.2 million for Deo Lefeu. And that was all set. But the moment the contracts came in, he wanted 70 grand a week. And he wouldn't go any lower than that, even if I put, like, huge agent fees. And I just wouldn't have it. I wasn't having a 70 grand a week player, because then Lister would be on 70 grand a week. Um, annoyingly, though, he then signed for... Oh, God, who was it he signed for? It was someone really surprising. Like, I think he signed for Watford or something, who were also relegated, on, like, 38 grand a week, which really annoyed... Oh, Hazard's gone through here. No! Oh, Ribeiro has made some stunning saves this season. I, I actually would be interested to see what Ribeiro's save percentage like. Because if you recall, guys, I was saying that um, Backman only had a 70% save success rate. Uh, he faced a lot of shots, of course, but still, I would have expected it to be higher than that. And I wanted to see if... You know, we've, ha we've played enough games now for that to be a reasonable stat. Um, hmm. QPR are playing the ball around quite quickly at the moment which is an interesting one. Right, I'm actually just going to take a look at it now so we can see. Luis Ribeiro, um, looking at the stats, 78%, and that is a huge difference. And he does hold a lot of those saves as well, which is very interesting. He's very good at that. He doesn't parry as many as you think. He's actually say, uh, he's held more shots than he's parried. That, to me, is superb. Six clean sheets in 20 matches as well. Um, yeah, uh, <laughs> There's a lot to be said there. And that, that extra 8% is worth points to us all season. Honda. Cleverly's in. Oh, Tom Cleverly. That was the chance for 1-0 Wimbledon. Um, we need a win here, really. Just to keep the momentum going. Because we've had a few games without a win. Obviously, tough matches. But the win away at Villa would have been priceless to us in that sense. Kirk. Round the side for Marley. Can't quite get there. Looks long and it's cut out by Fuentes, though. We're starting to get a bit of pressure mounting now. Kirk. Can he slip a ball through? Goes back for Duarte. Can he slip a ball through? He's going alone here, Duarte. Oh, he very nearly scored a screamer against Man United. Um, it hit the post, the goalkeeper, then the post, and then went out. Really frustrating. I say frustrating. To score two of those in one game would have been mental. But he was very close to it anyway. Oh, a bit of space here for Colbat. There's a man over. This is a goal. Oh. We've not hit the target enough so far. Everything else has been good for us so far, but we just haven't hit the target with our chances. And it's now 1-0 to QPR here. This would be a poor one for us. Um... I mean, we haven't had that many of these sort of poor results uh, this season, but I don't want to go into a slump now. You know, the draw away at Villa, conceding those goals, going from 2-0 up to 2 all in that one. The moment that happened, you know they were going to score. It's a great finish, though, from Hazard. Take no nothing away from him there. But we could do with a few more clean sheets as of late. There's been a few more goals going in this month. Um, yes, we do need to close down Hazard. Apologies if you can hear a vacuuming. Neighbours cleaning again. Um, I, I try to do it in between, but unfortunately it just doesn't work. Because um, they just seem to vacuum all fucking day. Um, so, what can we do here? 10-6. They're very narrow. Um, a lot of their key passes are coming around the box here. Um, so I'm wondering if we can maybe, since they're playing so well, um, can close them down a little bit more. 
Um, right, no. What we're going to do is we're going to close down a little bit more, but we're also going to try and exploit the flanks a little bit. We've got a 4-4-2. We may as well try and use it uh, because... <sighs> I don't know where to go from this situation. Like, we're 1-0 down, but we're actually playing fairly well in this game. And, um, Perisic, don't lose. Whoa. Okay, QPR is starting to look quite strong. We've got so much of the ball, that's what I was going to do. I was going to push the tempo a little bit and give us a bit more of a mixed passing. Because, yeah, it means that we might lose a bit of that possession, but it means that we also might be able to spot one of those key passes over the top. Duarte now looks long for Kirk. He's not going to win that, but we should be able to get on the rebound. Ah! We're so close to getting a decent chance away in one of these situations. Cleverly. And again, there's only... Right, Tom Cleverley is taking the throw. Tom Cleverley is a midfielder. I have got both of my fullbacks set to stay back on the throw-ins, and yet only one of them is. It's so irritating. And, oh, wow. That, that could have cost us a goal. I don't, it doesn't always happen. It only sometimes happens. And I don't get why that is. It, I've tried everything. Like, I've, none of my um, defenders are set to take throw-ins, just in case. I have two fullbacks set to stay back at all times because of that obvious reason for that kind of situation. And yet it just doesn't seem to work. It, it's so weird. Uh, right, talking has that again. Okay, half time coming up and QPR have been so much better than us today. And I'm wondering if maybe we should just flip this over completely. Um, as, much, as much as they were playing a 4-4-2, it actually didn't say that they were weak against a 4-4-2. So maybe in this second half, we should... Look, at, we've actually played all right. Um, so what we're going to do, we're going to switch things over. We're going to keep Marley up top. I'm going to get Duarte into that role. And we're going to get off Kirk and get on Jake Reeves to try and sweep, uh, try and mess things around a little bit. Get Ramsalar out on that wing and just see if we can't do something a bit more um, compact. Was we on control in that first? Was I on control or counter? That might have been the problem. We might have been on counter in that first half. Ah, it's. I always forget to change it before the game. Ramsalar's in here. Can he get up past his man? Go on, Bart. Ah, Blanco makes the save, but it's the first shot on target for us today. We've already looked better in the first two minutes of the second half than we did in the entirety of the first half. I'd like to think that this is the start of us starting to turn the screw a little bit now. Uh, team talk, right. They're looking a bit frustrated, that's fine. Um, encourage, we're just going to encourage them. We can make some changes around about 60 minutes if things still aren't going our way. I would like to win this one. If we could flip this round, I think that would be perfect. But I think the mistake I made might have been that we were on counter in that first half, and that could have been why we were just not really offering much. Um, this is the sort of day where we need Fabio to be... Amazing. Ramslar's ball in. Cleared away. Look at the amount of plays we've got on the edge of the box. Go on, Tom. Have a pop. Goes back for Honda. Can knock it around the corner, maybe. Duarte. Out wide for Ramslar. That's not too bad. Just keep the ball. Keep that ball. Keep it working. Reeves. Fuentes now. Can you get it across? Cleverly. Pull it across for someone, please. Marley. Oh, my days. Duarte. Oh. Well, the chances are coming now, guys. That's that's for sure. QPR are going to be backs against the wall for the next half an hour, but it does depend on whether we can actually... Oh! It's in! It's Fuentes, of all people. Juan Fuentes, 1-1, one, one, and I think we can go on to win this now. We're looking very, very good. And, yeah, that was the error. I was on counter for the first half. I must have been, because look how good we've been in this second half since we switched the tactic um, and went to control. I think we might have been... The tactic definitely needed to change as well, because we've looked fantastic. Getting Ramslar out on that wing um, a bit more advanced has been superb for us so far. So, let's tell them to... Well, that's not what I want. Let's tell them to concentrate. Uh, okay, Duarte's looking angry. That's a worry. I don't want him to get sent off or do something silly. Marley's not st still not had the best game. So Marley's going to come off, and we're going to get Colin Murphy on, because I must have forgot to put him on the bench. And hmm, Ramsalar, I, I still trust him to play like that. Um, I'm going to leave it at that for now, and maybe get Shala on for um, Tom Cleverley, just to give us a bit more of a winger on the wing, basically. We've got 23 minutes. I feel like we should at least be able to create one good chance in that time. Um, and if we can take it, then we'd get our deserved win. But then, if we don't win this game, it will be a one-all draw, and that will be because of me making a tactical bad problem. Tactical bad problem uh, in that first half of the game, basically. That will be on me, basically. Because I think a full game of playing like this, and QPR would have no hope. Murphy's going to shoot in the end, isn't he? Um, oh, we've got... Oh, tests Blanco again, but we've been so good in this second half. I'm going to just tell them to... Uh, Just maybe open the width up a little bit as well. Get some overlaps, get some fullbacks forward. Charles ball in, cleared away. Uh-oh. Now, we've got two players back. We seem to be better from corners, anyway. Ha leaving a couple of players back now means... Um, there we go, good clearance. Still 15 minutes of decent play you'd feel. I just... Mm. Oh, I don't believe it. We're going to... I mean, I, I, I can believe it. I feel like we should be winning this game, but we're not going to. And that, that's on me. That's my fault uh, for that first half. But... Ah, this would have been a really winnable match, and we've just started to drop a few little sh bad points uh, 
over the last couple. There we go, 1-1. One, one. Poor from us. Uh, QPR still did well. Give them credit where credit's due. Um, but we, that was unacceptable. But that is also partly on me. So... I mean, the fact is we're still eighth in the league, so it's not the end of the world. And we're still, what, 14 points above the drop zone. So all is looking good for that. Um, it's just a little bit poor. Uh, though That being said, our goal difference is better than everybody below us. So that says a lot to me. Look at that. 22 conceded in 60, 17 matches is still not that bad. I'd just like to see a few more being scored at the other end. But, you know, on another day, I think if we'd started on, on control, we probably would have won that match. But... These are the things. You live and learn, guys. You live and learn. We've got Premier League games against Crystal Palace away and Chelsea at home coming next. Palace away will not be easy. But if we grab a point, I would consider that a good result. And then Chelsea at home, it's just basically a free hit. So we're entering a tough period. But that's fine. That's fine. We have to come to expect that. So I'm thinking Swansea, because uh, I really want revenge against Swansea at this point. And that would be five matches uh, for the next one. So I think that's a, a nice big chunk for you guys for tomorrow. Um, so Palace away, I'd like a point there. Chelsea at home, I don't expect anything. Stoke at home will be tough. I'd settle for a point, but I'd like a win. Uh, so let's just say three points from those two matches there would be great. I know that sounds silly, but you know what I mean, on average. Preston in the cup, we have to win. And Liverpool away, we'll probably lose because um, it's Liverpool away. And they're actually top of the league, I think. No, second now. So I think we could probably only grab maybe like three or four points, maybe even less over the next few matches. But still... With Fabio joining us for the Liverpool game, you just never know. Anyway, guys, if you'd like this episode, please do drop a like on the video. That would be superb. And if you haven't already, please do subscribe to the channel for more videos like this in your inbox every single day at 7 o'clock. And I will join you guys in the next episode for a home game against Swansea. We've lost to them three times so far in the Premier League. I want revenge, and I think this is the best chance to get it because they are that is a humdinger of a game. They are playing like Keegan's Newcastle. So let's see if we can capitalize. I'll see you guys soon. Thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye.